set up a little bit and my living room's where my ethernet cable is so it's like a lot easier to like install and download everything I still gotta get on my computer in here anyway so news what's been going on so I'm no longer in the band Cemetery Sex left on good terms it's just like creative workflow differences we, they got a new guitarist I did get to play uh, two shows before the new guitarist came in so I got to have some fun with that but yeah, they got a new guitarist, got a bunch of new songs written. They're really great. Um, I got to see them play live with new, new guitarists twice so far. Excellent. Uh, they're going to put out an EP soon, which you should definitely keep your eyes out for. And I, I don't remember if I read this right, but I heard they might be going on tour soon. So if you do see them playing in your city, definitely check them out. Great stuff. And as far as like the DJing has been going, I um, haven't been doing too much uh, goth or industrial lately. Uh, my current city is like really saturated with that kind of stuff so it's been hard to like get gigs or whatever so lately I've been doing a 90s alternative night uh, done it a few times now not sure if I'll continue to do it but it's been fun when I have been doing it and by 90s alternative I mean like uh, not necessarily like really mainstream Nirvana Weezer Green Day no doubt kind of stuff I'm talking more like less well-known indie alternative stuff a little bit of hip-hop and electronic music too and not just strictly 90s even, I'm doing a little bit of late 80s, early 2000s, kind of like a really big variety. And it's been like a lot of fun to do, but I am kind of missing spinning Gotham Industrial, so I'm hoping I can get more back into that soon. And anyway, so without further ado, uh, to the rest of the video. So the topic for today is kind of a little bit about 2000s Gotham Industrial and kind of why I feel like I would like to see some elements of it kind of sort of come back. So I know not that many people have like made videos on the subject. I think there's like a few of them out there. I know there's one really good one by Gabrielle Luna on YouTube that says it's called In Defense of 2000s Goth. That is great. And I feel like it's probably going to say much better stuff than I could say in here. Anyway, yeah, one thing I've noticed is the 2000s is in again. So I work in a high school. Um, so I see what all like the high school kids are like partially into, at least in terms of visual appearance. And, like, I'm seeing kids now wearing the same uh, band shirts, as in same designs. Not just same bands, but the designs as I remember them when I was in high school. Bands that were new back then. So, like, all, like, the new metal stuff, like the Slipknot or whatever. I'm seeing those exact same band shirts that I was seeing kids wearing when I was in high school. Like, 20 years ago. And, yeah, I even saw one kid in, like, an Emily the Strange sweatshirt. And I had forgotten Emily the Strange existed until I saw that sweatshirt and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. I'm surprised kids have heard of this. Anyway, uh, yeah, so also been getting a bit uh, nostalgic about 2000s myself a little bit. Uh, I recently was hanging with a friend and we decided, hey, let's rip each other's CD collections. And if you don't know what ripping a CD means, pretty much it means you take your CD and you put it in um, your computer's disk drive and then you like take the files that are on the CD, the music files, and you transfer them over to your computer. And the benefit of that is you can choose how high or low quality you want of the audio. So you can have really high quality audio off of it, or if you want to save a lot of space and have shit quality audio, you can do that too. And it was like a lot of fun. It's like a very different experience because you're one, you're physically going through each CD and choosing it, and two, it can take a bit for each CD to get uh, ripped. So. We, would, we were at it for a few hours, and I only put a small dent in our CD collection. And it was, like, fun to talk about, like, our experiences back in the day. She was a DJ for, like, a good chunk of the 2000s, so that also got me a little bit nostalgic. And, yeah, I kind of, like, missed some of those experiences, just, like, the physicality of, like, buying the CDs and then converting it to, like, the digital file so you could put it on your MP3 player. And mostly I was doing this for my DJ library. Anyway, moving on, sort of. I've been kind of also just nostalgic, uh, going back to some of, like, the 2000s stuff in general. I've been giving a re-listen to, like, the uh, Strobe Light Records New Dark Age compilations, which were, like, a good compilation of, like, 2000s death rock and goth rock. And I've been, like, getting back into some of the 2000s industrial, like, reevaluating some of it. Because uh, I know one thing in the 2000s that was really popular was, like, the future pop and the agrotech trends and... Although I'm not crazy about a lot of it, there were some good bands, and there was a lot of good industrial that wasn't quite either of those styles either that I feel like could use a little more recognition. 
Anyway, so a bit more about my own nostalgia with 2000s goth. Well, it was when I was first really getting into this stuff. Because I was alive in the 90s. I was born in 89, but I was in like elementary school. I couldn't have really been into this stuff. Just too young. Yeah, 2000s, like by mid-2000s, I was like getting into all this stuff. And it was just such a different experience back then to now. Uh, nowadays, everything is like hard codified. There's like all the information. You can listen to anything instantaneously. Back then, there was a little bit of a mystery, but also like it felt like a whole like other fucking world to like consume and learn about. Because partially, and this is going to be like one of the main things I really miss about the 2000s, just the sheer amount of variety out there, both music and fashion wise. So going back to like the new Dark Age compilations, one thing I noticed, even though they were focused on only like two goth subgenres, uh, death rock and sort of like second, third wave goth rock, the bands still sounded really different from each other. Like some of the death rock bands would be kind of electronic-y. Some of them would have like almost like a surf vibe to them. Some of them would have like the cabaret uh, sort of, what's that band called that was popular? Cinema Strange type bands. Some would sound more like Roz Williams, straight up Christian death clones, like huge variety. And then you had the goth rock on top of that, which should have some of the same variety as well. I remember like, for example, on one of the compilations, there's this really interesting band. They're called, uh, I forget their name now, Empire Hideous. And it's like actually a guy who used to sing for the Misfits when briefly in their, uh, sorry, what's it called? South America tour. And it's like, okay, what if like 90s Misfits era singing over like some goth rock? And it's like very interesting. Or you'd have like bands like Hate Sex that I love, which is almost like sort of the guitarist from Hate Sex was originally in Diva Destruction. So it's kind of like a almost hybrid between like Diva Destruction style band and a death rock band. So these bands would be a lot more different. Of course, you had the industrial. I'm, like I said, they're Future Pop and Agro Tech were the two main ones. But there was like other industrial too, like a lot of like the synth rock type of like almost more melodic version of the industrial rock of like the 90s with bands sort of like uh, I guess Dope Stars Inc or Zero Mancer or whatever and of course the 2000s was also like kind of like I feel like the golden age of what I consider to be dark, dark alternative which is all that stuff in the goth industrial scene that isn't really goth or industrial whether it be bands like Collide that kind of have a few elements of both but also toss in some elements from other genres and like kind of not anything in particular, but kind of fit with everything. Or bands that were like totally different from everything else, but still tied to the scene, like culturally, like uh, Rasputina, who it's all music on cellos, but played alongside like a lot of the goth stuff. People who were in the goth and the industrial tended to like them too. Uh, of course, the fashions were like super varied compared to now. Like nowadays, I feel like most people are kind of going for like the same look that people like call trad goth now which is kind of supposed to be an 80s revivalist thing if you've ever seen all like those crazy goth types all around the internet keep in mind most of those are based off of different types of outfits you would see in the 2000s and to a lesser extent the 90s because i feel like the 90s was the start of this branching out and the 2000s was kind of like the ultimate uh result of that and i kind of like those styles better like how everyone has their own kind of unique look I know, for example, like a lot of people I've ended up dating or whatever have had like some sort of variation on some sort of 2000s goth style. Uh, I'm kind of mostly dressed down. I'm not like a fashion expert, but I, I do like a lot of this stuff. Uh, and sorry, one sec. Of course, the two main styles most people remember from back then are uh, cyber goth and what we can now call mall goth. So cyber goth. I've heard a lot of people talk about it, and a lot of people, are, some people will say, oh, that has nothing to do with goth whatsoever. I don't think I can really agree with that, because mostly it was just a look. There wasn't a subgenre of music called cyber goth. It was just some people just like the cyber fashion accessories or whatever. What kind of music they would listen to would vary. Like, some of them probably did, like, listen to Bauhaus and enjoyed a lot of, like, actual goth stuff, too, and not just, like, future pop or agrotech. And I know, like, a lot of people back then had a cyber goth phase some of them might be trying to bury that phase but i know like a lot of people that are like older i see some of their old pictures and they're looking kind of cyber in those pictures like most people didn't have like the extreme uh eisenfunk pong look but there are like a few like cyber elements or whatever 
And yeah, so that's not really too much of a thing anymore. Some people keep trying to bring it back, but not really. I mean, uh, some of the stuff, like I know Cyber Dog's still around, but they've kind of like modified their look where it's a little less Cyber Goth specific and it's more like black rave gear or whatever. And anyway, I got to go to Cyber Dog when I went to London this summer. So that's why that came to mind. Uh, that's something for another topic though, anyway. Also, let's talk a little bit about uh, Malgoth too. So I remember when I was younger, people didn't really use the term Malgoth that much. I know, I'm sure it was used a few different times. I know I've heard it heard, used a few times, but like the main terms I remember being used, at least on the internet, were Spooky Kid and Mansonite. I'm not sure if Spooky Kid was used in real life, but I know Mansonite was, because I was talking to one of my friends earlier again, with CD ripping party, that was one of the terms she used. Uh, and wait. <clears throat> so yeah, people like, kind of remember it and it's a thing that's not really a thing anymore kids want to bring it back but it's kind of hard to do like you'll still see alternative kids in like high schools obviously i work in one but um there you don't really see to see the extremity i remember when i was in high school like trip pants i don't think most kids have them i know one of my friends sold some trip pants to someone recently that was kind of younger but yeah, you don't see like a lot of the extreme uh, clothing choices anymore. You'll see more like basic black looks with band shirts or whatever. Um, don't see like the extreme makeup or, or excessive accessories. Because I remember lots of bracelets, lots of jewelry everywhere. Um, don't really see that much anymore. It was like, a, I guess what kids would call now maximalist back then. Of course, like a lot of people are like trying to enforce boundaries on this thing that didn't really have any boundaries. Mostly it was just high schoolers just doing what they thought was cool. And it wasn't like they listened to a specific genre or anything. So like whatever general stuff was popular, they liked. It wasn't just new metal. So they like also stuff like him or maybe a few emo bands or Nine Inch Nails or all sorts of stuff. Uh, because for the most part, when you're like in high school, you're mostly just listening to what your friends are hearing or you're listening to whatever you've been exposed to and are enjoying, at least back then, because we didn't have the internet to give us how-tos on how to be X. It was mostly just influenced by word of mouth through friends. So I can even remember like a lot of the quote unquote emo kids that started to pop up by the time of my last year or two of high school. A lot of the bands they listened to weren't necessarily like emo at all. They'd like System of the Down, they'd like Ham. Those were like popular bands with those kids just as much as like some of the bands you'd think of like My Chemical Romance. I actually don't remember most of them really liking uh, Fall Out Boy or Panic at the Disco that much. I remember Fall Out Boy being pretty mainstream. So as an A-side, it's weird to see Fall Out Boy being treated as like some like super alternative subculturally band or whatever because... They were pretty popular and mainstream back then in a way that even My Chemical Romance wasn't. Anyway, kind of going back to the main point. So yeah, people try to enforce boundaries. Also, I've heard someone even on the line saying how it's like, oh, this person's trying to be Malkoff, but then they're like trying to combine it with Sanrio or whatever, and that's not how it goes. And it's like, I'm just thinking back, and I'm like, this is like the craziest thing I have ever read because anyone that was like around back then would remember that the, all the Hello Kitty shit was extremely popular with all the kids who like shopped at Hot Topic and stuff. Uh, obviously it wasn't like the bright pink pastel Hello Kitty stuff. It was Hello Kitty on like black clothing or whatever. But it was like just straight up Hello Kitty. It wasn't Hello Kitty with Xanax or Hello Kitty with knives. Well, that goes in like that one uh, copy pasta I've seen recently where it's like Hello Kitty doesn't like Xanax or knives or blood or all those mean things you associate her with. She likes baking and friends and all that stuff it's, it's not like edgy hello kitty it's just hello kitty in like a black kind of like mall goth type of look incorporated into it. it's just plain hello kitty um and like other stuff would be also like popular with that too like you'd see like happy tree friends which if you don't remember that uh it was this cartoon well no i think it was happiness bunny that's something different than happy tree friends but anyway happy tree friends was these really violent cartoons about cute animals getting mutilated or whatever and happiness bunny was like this mean bunny who said mean things it was cute though uh, and i remember also those black shirts with just like the edgy phrases like silence is golden and duct tape is silver or i'm the girl your parents warned you about i actually saw those coming back like i think it was like almost a decade ago at this point but i saw those one time when i just walked into a hot topic with a friend like these shirts are back i thought these would be like 
way past A now, but I saw them. I think they're gone again. Like those shirts were like interesting. They have not uh, aged well humor wise. Anyway, so yeah, that's about all I got really to say on the topic for right now. I might do more videos on the subject later when I've got more to talk about. But yeah, so I do want to keep making videos. I want to like get back more back into this. Because lately I've been like kind of a little, uh, I guess, frustrated with the way the scene's been going. I'm like, I should like speak my voice out more about stuff, make more content. Give alternative perspectives to, to what everyone else is saying. Because, like, you got a lot of people who might be, like, saying certain stuff to fit in or to fit a narrative. Maybe they weren't actually around back then. So it's nice to, like, have different perspectives, even if some people might disagree with them. Anyway, hopefully my next video won't be months and months in advance. And I will see you all next time.